Hi everyone, welcome to my take. Today in this video I thought I'd give you some tips on writing the introduction to the PhD thesis. Often with the PhD thesis and introduction what I find is that, um, and also the introduction for master's dissertations, I find that students will end up reading lots and lots of papers and finding that they still don't know enough um, and just keep on reading more and get stuck in a cycle of reading and more reading. But if you are kind of stuck in the cycle or if you're not quite sure where to get started, then hopefully these tips will help you. So let's get started. The final draft of your introduction will come last. It's normally written at the end. I wrote my introduction last uh, for my PhD thesis and for all my previous assignments. Of course, if you um, feel comfortable with getting started straight away, then by all means you should. And actually the introduction does need preparation because, well, a big part of the introduction is the literature review. So you will need to be gathering information as you're going along through your writing so that by the time you get to the stage of writing your introduction, it becomes easy for you um, to get started and to get into the rhythm of it. Tip number two is to look and analyse examples. Look at the examples of PhD students who have gone before you. Have a look at how they're writing their introduction um, and have a look at um, you know, examples of good theses uh, that your supervisor recommends and also look at papers from your field of research. And also remember that you can use your continuation and transfer report. Um, don't you know discard it altogether just because your project has changed somewhat over the years. There will always be material that you can reuse, even if it's just a paragraph or so. Um, you've not submitted it for you know a degree yet. So it's completely okay for you to use the literature review from your transfer report in your final thesis also. And also starting with a transfer report might make it easier for you to get started and into the flow of writing because you'll have something on the page. Um, to look at and when you start writing you can discard it, you can replace it with better literature that you found um, but it's just a good place to get started, a tip that might be useful. Tip number three is to ensure that you give the necessary background for your research. For example my thesis was heavily focused on the strategy that I use so I had to give a background of not only that strategy but also alternative strategies that have been used to explain why I chose to do it the way that I was doing it and why I chose my strategy over the others. The introduction will actually outline um, what the project is about so you kind of need to have a whole understanding of what your results, your discussion etc are going to be and your introduction and your conclusion will link to one another um, so you have to make sure that you're giving all the background information for the rest of your thesis to be understood. Um, of course in the discussion and or some other elements of your thesis you will explain things but in your introduction that's where the reader has an understanding of why you're doing what you're doing so you will be giving the rationale in your introduction you'll be giving the reader an idea of uh, the significance um, why you're setting out to do what you are doing um, and what is missing currently in the field that's propelling you to carry out this research and how you're going to do it tip number four is to ensure that you list the subheadings uh, for your introduction before you get started or even when you've already got started it might help to um, just remind yourself of the overall structure. You have to make sure that every aspect of your title is covered in your introduction. Make sure that you cover all the keywords that are in the title of your thesis and if, you're, if the title is something that you're not yet decided on then you have to make sure that you're covering uh, you know, the key aspects of your thesis and then you can always come back and um, add more if you need to depending on what your title will be. A big part of being a successful PhD student is structuring and organising your time and your work effectively. So by you having these subheadings in your thesis, it will help you to realise how much you have done and how much needs to be done uh, because you can always assign certain days um, to each of those subheadings, make sure that you've completed each, each section. Tip number five goes hand in hand with tip number four. 
Uh, once you've decided what subheadings you're going to include in your introduction, uh, decide how many pages or how many words you're going to limit each section to. If you're anything like me, then you can just keep writing endlessly, but I can also write to a limit. There are so many things that you will read and you feel that are relevant to your research. Uh, there are so many different perspectives that you can look at things, and there's so much that you can write about, and all of it can seem relevant. But if you limit yourself and you tell yourself that you've only got a page or two to assign to each subheading, it makes you concentrate on the most key aspects um, of you know, the relevant uh, topics underneath that subheading within the literature. So it makes it easier for you to um, manage in bite sizes. Also by assigning a number of pages or a number of words to each subheading, you actually distribute uh, the work better so that the structure can improve um, of your overall thesis as well. Tip number six is to read with a purpose. Don't keep reading papers and papers endlessly. You want to read what is very relevant to your work. And of course, you know, reviews and things will be helpful for you to have a broader understanding of your research. But at the end of the day, you don't need to be reading every single word of every single paper out there because you'll never get through them all. And unfortunately, you know, as a researcher, you will find that there is always knowledge to explore and to gain. Um, we will never know everything. And in fact, the PhD is a very, um, you know, you have a very specific topic on which you will know a lot about, but there is still so much more to explore. And as researchers, we are contributing new knowledge. So, you know, there's knowledge that we have that other people don't have uh, because, you know, you've not yet made the contribution through your thesis. By the time I got to the end of my thesis writing, I realized that there were four very relevant papers for one chapter of my thesis. And I kept focusing and coming back to those four papers. Um, and I've actually put those in, uh, I think I, I've actually shown that in one of my previous videos, the referencing one, where I've got one folder that only has four papers. But if you select those couple of papers that are very relevant to your work, then you can branch off from there. You can read abstracts. The great thing about using EndNote is you can cite while you write. Um, and that way you can make sure that everything you're writing is relevant and needed, necessary for your writing. Tip number seven is to gather info in an organized manner. When you're going through the other sections of your thesis, any thoughts that you have, any kind of points that you need to make in the introduction, just do it there and then and it will really help with when it comes to focusing entirely on the introduction. Also, while you're gathering info, it might help for you to try to remember and refer to your subheadings so that you can think of how what you, the point that you want to make uh, or the knowledge that you find that you think you should include in your thesis, you can see where that will go. Um, so structurally, it really helps to keep referring back to that structure you set out of the subheadings in your introduction. Because then you can go back to it and just add the information that you want to add to the relevant subheading. Remember to pick up any significant recurring controversies, any significant missing knowledge that you find in the introductions of other papers that you read that are relevant to your work. If you're not feeling up to it, it also helps to just sometimes copy and paste a sentence directly from a paper um, into your uh, first draft of the introduction and then maybe just highlight it in a different colour, put speech marks, and you can always come back to it later um, and rephrase it. But do make sure you add the reference um, as you copy and paste it so that you don't lose the source. Tip number eight is for the start of your introduction, it's always a good idea to start with the significance of your work so that you draw the reader into um, your thesis and to get them to keep reading your thesis. So it would be a good idea to write down um, you know, what the significance is, maybe it's a medical significance, um, maybe you know, there's another way that your work will be contributed. It, it is rare for PhD research to be, you know, to be a life-changing contribution. Um, you know, most of us just make small but significant contributions to knowledge and, you know, which we may not see the benefit of um, until 10 years later when someone uses some of the research that we did um, to develop something bigger and greater. But, you know, you, you gave them the pedestal to be able to do that. So just try to focus on what that bigger picture is and that way you can you know, quickly garner interest from your readers. Tip number nine is to remember the formula P. I was actually taught this formula in school and I still find it useful to this day. So what does P stand for? It's point, evidence and explanation. 
Following the rule of P actually helps you to write fantastic paragraphs uh, because you give your point, then you give your evidence to back up your point, and then you give the explanation of your point and evidence. So it actually makes you know a nice enclosed piece of writing in itself for each single paragraph that you write. Um, and I would definitely recommend adhering to that structure for all your writing. Ensure that you add a reference for every statement that you make that's not general knowledge. You don't have to reference every single study that several people have done. I mean, sometimes when you read reviews, you see you know a long list of references that people have given um, for particular studies. And often you'll find that that's in the Vancouver system. So actually that does work a bit better than using Harvard referencing system, for example. Um, but you know, if you are using Harvard, then you don't have to put long lists of references in your thesis. So for example, if it's a technique that lots of researchers have used, then you might want to mention you know, the first person who did it, uh, rather than list all the various researchers who have used that system. But it really does depend on the situation, it depends on what you're writing. Um, but you know, in my case, I don't remember anywhere in my thesis giving long lists of references anywhere. The last and final tip, tip number 10, is to try to include your own figures. You can reproduce other figures but do remember to reference them and um, make sure you mention that you reproduce them. If you do reproduce any figures you may need to check your university guidelines uh, to find out if you need to get permission from the author first before you do so. But some universities are more strict than others um, about that. Um, so just find out from your university, find out from other students um, if you need to gain permission or not. But your figures can be quite simple. So for example, if you're a biologist uh, or any kind of life scientist, then you may just put in a picture of some cells in the introduction um, and then maybe put in a few simple graphs or proposed mechanism. Then maybe you want to include some tables. And actually, if you include tables and you do include figures that are your own, it does actually help you also because you can uh, figure out how to um, summarize key concepts um, or mechanisms for example if you're doing a molecular signaling uh, project then it does really help to um, you know have a good summary a visual summary which can serve as a great reminder during your viva so i hope my 10 tips have helped you if they have please let me know in the comment section below this video um, and maybe you know share your own ideas of how you approach your introduction so that others, other PhD students can benefit also. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. See you soon, bye!